Welcome to the Pat Sheranian Show. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching us, you're on pat.utahvalleylive.com. And if you're listening to us also, you're on KHQN, and we thank you for being with us. That's an AM station, by the way. Appreciate your joining us. We want to thank our sponsor, Kayani, K-Y-A-N-I. And if you want to find it online, add a .net to that, K-Y-A-N-I .net. And if you're an athlete and you're out walking and you're, you know, trying out for something or getting ready for basketball or finishing up in football, whatever's going on, if you want to really boost your workouts, your answer is the Kayani Nitro FX this is a great product. It opens up everything in your body. Your circulation picks up. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. The Nitro FX dilates the arteries so more blood, oxygen, and nutrients can travel from the heart to the rest of the body. Taking a few drops of Kyani Nitro FX every day improves energy, defends, repairs, and maintains nearly every cell in the body. Boost your performance. Try Kyani Nitro FX today. And call if you'd like to receive some information or a product. In fact, why don't I give a bottle of that away today? It's a $56 value. That's a wholesale value. So give a call, 801-362-9552. 801-362-9552. You will have energy you have never had before. The product comes from the root and the leaves of the noni plant. Absolutely pure, no caffeine. Everything is natural, and your life will change. And I have trouble sitting still because I just took mine. <laughs> so I'm ready to get up and go run somewhere. My guest today is Janice Weinheimer. Happy to have you with us. Did I, I'm getting that better, am, am I? Oh, yes. You're okay. Doing great. I can't spell it yet, but I'm getting better with pronouncing it. <clears throat> Janice has written, a, she's written some books. The book we're talking about is The Illness that healed me. I love the title, The Illness That Healed Me, An Account of Surviving Sexual Abuse and the Journey into Healing. Now, she's been on the air with me for a couple of three weeks now, and um, I've really gotten to know her and appreciate what she has been through. And I think of all the people, uh, what, one out of three women by the time they're 20 and one out of 18. six, 18, and one out of six uh, boys by the time they are 18. 18 have been molested sexually, um, generally by someone close to you or someone in the family, someone you that they have trusted along the way. So those stats are not good. Are they national or Utah? Both. Both. So we're right there with the national. It's a it's a terrible it's a terrible subject to have to talk about, but we have to talk about it. Because awareness is what will make the difference for everyone. If we become more aware of what's going on around us, the people that are around us, and somehow manage to oh, help our children be aware without scaring the daylights out of them. But people need to be more aware of what's going on and even more so become aware that there are places that you can go, books you can read, people you can work with, and Janice is one of them. She is a seminar leader. And she's going to tell you more today about the seminars that are going to be coming up. She has been a leader for her entire life. And uh, now she has focused on what was her problem for a number of years and how she got through this problem. And now she wants to share with others the healing process, which is really amazing. So I congratulate you once again for where you are because of where you've been. And, uh, and the fact that you really... In, your, in a letter that she sent me before we actually met, I had been, she had, was referred to me, I think, through, by yes. another author, is that correct? Yes. And uh, about coming on the air with me. And she writes this really passionate uh, paragraph about what she has, uh, how she has gotten to where she is and how much she wants to help other people. So I'm going to let you share this because these are your words. And I felt they were so heartfelt that I wanted to start with this today. Is that okay with you? Oh, that's fine. Okay, great. Because it tells where you've been, how you've gone through it, what you're doing for others, and the future. I spend a lot of time uh, reading um, self-help books. I was in therapy for a number of years, three different therapists. I um, took impact training, which brought me back 
to focus on who I really was on the inside instead of living the lie of the persona I had created. And I started studying energy back in the late 80s, early 90s uh, with uh, Dr. Carolyn Meese, and we're going to talk more about her today. But she was my introduction, really, to energy and how it affects you and, and how we have so much and how you can waste it. And from there, I went on to other modalities. I studied acupressure for four years under one of the leading acupuncturists in the world and learned an, a lot from him and the, about all the meridians in the body and how he had us do practices in class where we could move the energy up and down the body just by focusing on could it. Could you feel that? Oh, yes. You really could feel the energy moving? Yes. It took me a while. Mm -hmm. I'd see others around me and I'd think, am I doing this right? <laughs> <laughs> but they'd taken these classes longer. But by the time I'd been in there four years, I could actually feel the shift as it moved up and down. And it's subtle. It's subtle, so you have to tune into it. But people who can see energy and work with it. Is that like auras? Or is that and, different? No, it's like a fish in an ocean of water. There are lines of energy. Uh, the one lady that taught me a lot, she said it's like a matrix, and there are lines running everywhere, and you're just in amongst them. And so the energy runs through you, runs through these uh, lines, and, she's, and she explained it that way. She said you're just like a fish in an ocean. Wow with energy all over you, because that's what energy is. And we talked about this before. Dr. Oz said in 2007 that the new frontier medicine would be uh, energetic medicine. And that's where the focus, it, it, there's just a real change going on as I study the webinars and, and the books and the things that are coming out. It's just, it's like God opened up the heavens and, and is pouring out all these different methods of energy healing and they go to different people according to how <coughs> you know they're equipped their talents and abilities to work with it and it's coming out in many different modalities are we getting further away from prescription drugs i hope yes is that part of what that's this what hope? dr oz meant okay. when he was talking yeah. about that surgery and drugs are what uh the american medical association uses now that's the big thing where Eastern medicine has always been more about energy, the Eastern way, and we're coming more to that. Now, there's a, a Could place. Could I add in healing yourself? Yes, yes. Okay. There's a place for a Western medicine. I mean, if you're in an emergency, Western medicine is the best. Right. You know, but they have what they call um, medicine, medicine-less hospitals in China, where you go in and they don't they work on you with different modalities like qigong actually greg braden on his website www.gregbraden.com has a video clip of a woman who had a a tumor in her bladder it was like a two and three quarter inch tumor and so they were going to work on that and she has to give permission and she has to work with them the Qigong masters come in and they chant over her. And in less than five minutes, you're watching as you see this tumor in her bladder just slowly disappear and it's gone. There's no scar it's tissue. It's absorbed back into the body. It's just gone. It's wow. dispelled, totally gone. And that was a real eye opener. So I want you to spell that because I would never have pronounced it that way. Qigong uh -huh. is a Q I. G O N G N G yeah. G O N G. I'm I'm looking at it on a piece of paper, Qigong. but I read this and I certainly didn't come anywhere near pronouncing it. And so, is this a method or a person? Oh, that's a method. It's okay. like acupuncture okay. or you know Reiki or some of the other things. And my favorite is uh, Spring Forest Qigong with Chuni Lin. His story is fantastic. He grew up in China. And he lived a horrible, horrible life. He was so angry and hated and everything. And it took years of Qigong practice. And the masters in China spend, they tell you it takes 50 years for you to learn enough to be able to really use this. But Chuni has, has moved to Minnesota and he is teaching at the university there. 
and he has come up with Spring Forest Qigong, which is a quick, easy method to teach you how to do it. And you can do it, you can learn some of it in just a few minutes. Now, have you been through this? I have gone through his level one and level two mm -hmm. courses, read his book. You have to go back, level three and four, you have to go back to Minnesota. But yeah, I uh, yes, I bought this on DVDs a few years ago and went through the whole thing. It's fascinating what they do, but it's all with energy, you know, and what you're doing and what your focus is on and what you believe. So this is fascinating. So I took that and um, I have, in the last year, started using the Emotion Code by Dr. Bradley Nelson. That's at healerslibrary.com. And he was given one of these modalities, but it was one that spoke to my heart. I've tried several, but this one really spoke to my heart because he talks about trapped emotions. We all have excess, <coughs> excess emotional baggage. A lot of overweight people have been stuffing things for a long time. That's it's for sure. It's not just overweight. All of us have it. In fact, the average person probably has between three and four hundred trapped emotions in mm. their body. Well, I say that because somebody said that to me a long time ago, and I said, I don't know. With my personality, I've been shouting it out for years, and so I don't know that anything is trapped. And uh, you have taught me coming in here that it hasn't. That isn't what it's about. Uh, it goes much, much deeper and uh, way beyond anything I had experienced before. So it's really been interesting. A lot of these emotions get trapped in the first six years. And we don't know they're there until they're uncovered or till we come and confront them. Yes, you don't, uh, you don't realize they're there. But what happens is a uh, trapped emotion is actually a ball of energy that vibrates at a certain frequency. So if you have a, a, a anger, right. say a trapped emotion of anger, which vibrates at 150, and you've got that stuck, say, in your chest, well, any area around your chest is going to be affected by that lower vibrational frequency. It's going to affect the life force and everything. And say you have one of pride, or you have one of shame, like I did tons of shame, or panic, you know, all of these lower energies, they're always there, so it's, and they're always vibrating at this frequency. Well, now, I can't remember if I asked this before, but we have men and women, but particularly women with so much breast cancer. And are, is, could that, I know that emotions contribute to illnesses, and I felt for years that cancer was somehow <clears throat> tied more into our emotions than perhaps our physical makeup, even though there might be a propensity because other people in your family have um, have cancer, have had cancer. But then as I've studied some of the people that have passed away, they had very similar personalities, raised in the same home, uh, some of the same what we would call hang-ups maybe, um, but some of the same ideas about things. A lot of stress, a lot of stress going on. A-type personalities pushing all the time, that was you. Pushing and pushing and pushing all the time. Um, by the way, I, did I tell you that it was Jane um, Goodmanson, Jane Eddington? Oh. It, it, my my daughter-in-law's mother. No. Yeah, she's the one that went to school with you, and she said she'd never seen anybody study the way you studied, that you absolutely would not accept less than an AA plus for yourself. Uh, I was a nut. I put myself through so much stress, and I think we uh, we talked about that. I used yeah. to sit with hands clenched, clenched and teeth clenched for every test paper coming back for fear I wouldn't have the highest grade. Oh. And I wasn't the smartest kid by far, but I stressed myself by studying, studying, studying. That was part of the achieving, you know, the, the external thing that kept me going. Part of your persona. Yeah, the okay. false persona. I want to get to, uh, before I get too, too sidetracked, there's so much to talk about, but I want to get into um, the, the, uh, certifi the certification that you've just gone through. Okay, that, I was talking about the emotion code and that's right. what I became certified in because I saw how you can release these trapped emotions. And one other thing, a trapped emotion, did I tell you, it was the size of a, a baseball or an orange right. to the size of a cantaloupe. Oh. It can be that big. And where it lodges, it's going to affect, like I said, all of those areas. 
Well, we can have like between three and four hundred of those in there. Well, I went through years of counseling to release emotional baggage and didn't release very much. But you can release these in minutes. And really? once they're released, they never come back. Can we do that right now? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of sure I wouldn't do that to her. <laughs> we could. <laughs> We actually release them with magnets, and I have a magnetic bracelet, so I can always use that to do it with. Oh, that's great. It's amazing. Okay, but let's, let's keep hearing what you have done. And, then we're and I want to say one things. other thing about the trapped emotions, because when you're little and you need your heart gets hurt and you need protection for your heart so it doesn't get hurt, these trapped emotions make a, what they call a heart wall that goes around your heart to protect it from getting hurt. And in the training, we talked about walls. Sure. The impact yeah, training sure. about the walls around our heart. And that's what they are. Well, Trapping we say that very casually, though. Well, I've sealed my heart up. I just got hurt. I've been, you know, whether it was a parent or a, an opposite sex friend or whatever it is, there, we're always saying things like, well, my heart's been broken and I'm not going there again and I'm going to build a wall. And they And people do. And the other thing, when you mention heartbreak, there's actually cracks, energy cracks in your Physical. heart. Physical. Those who can see energy see it, those cracks in the heart. And when someone dies, there's strands of energy. When you have a love relationship with someone, there's strands of energy that go from your heart to their heart. Wow. Real cords. Wow. And so at death, those cords are cut, and that's why your heart hurts. Physically, yes, you're in pain. Yes, yeah. it, physically and emotionally, you suffer because those cords have been severed. And you haven't had a chance to send love in there to heal them. We do sever cords sometimes energetically on purpose, but we send love in to heal. To, for the healing. Yes, and we don't often know enough. We go through the grieving, but we don't understand that it's an actual energetic severing. Wow. So Oof. that's why it hurts. I need a private class. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are going to do some seminars. We're going to move we're on through this thing. About we're going to do some seminars, and we're going to start here in the Utah area. Right. Is that right? And uh, up around maybe Jordan, South Jordan? There or down here in the Utah Valley. Either one, both, maybe. Because that would be interesting to, um, and can you do this fairly quickly? If so, then you could have an all-day seminar and people could really walk out with some information. Yes, we could. I'd, uh, I, we chatted mm -hmm. just briefly, and I thought about starting it out with some Qigong because it teaches you quickly about energy. Uh, there are two or three things where I can get people involved so they can see it quickly. And once they see it, I had a doctor friend who uh, works up in Park City now. He also has his uh, practice in uh, Malibu in uh, California. And he moved it to Park City partly. He flies back and forth because he says the energy is so much better in, in Park, Park City. City than at Malibu. But he also said that he, he teaches energy to the medical students at UCLA. And he said... It is fascinating to watch those students come in and say, oh, I know I have to be in this class. I don't want yeah, to take this yeah. stuff, you know, because they're right, uh, left brain, yeah. scientific. He said, when they first feel that energy and can move it with their hands, he said, there is an awareness that opens up in them, and they're fascinated, and they won't leave it alone. Oh, wow. That's so great. So it's being taught. And I said to him, how did you learn about this? He mm -hmm. said, uh, God taught me because there weren't books and things to teach you. And I said, well, tell me about that. And he said, I went to Death Valley. And I said, Death Valley? There's nothing in there's Death Valley. There's nothing in Death Valley. He More said, of Death Valley. He says, nothing but God. And oh, I was there with God, and he taught me about energy. Fascinating. And he talked to me for about an hour about this. And how he learned. You've had it. some wonderful moments and instructors, haven't you? Yes, I have. I have been led to people who have guided me. Okay, well, let's because now you're helping other people. So let's get the certification, get past that. Yeah, I, I'm certified. I can now do the energy release. And like I say, I can. it takes minutes. 
Are you working on hypnotherapy? I am. I'm halfway through my modules. I have three left to go to finish my hypnotherapy course. And you'll be a hypnotherapist. Yes, I will. And the advantage there would be what when you're working with people? It's another modality when people have been um, t when traumatized that you can go in and write a script for them and make a tape for them so that they can replay it almost like subliminal at night, which helps them change the energy of the situation that they're in. You Interesting. Know, just change it. You, you and I talked about right. Steve Covey and right. his paradigm the shift. Yeah, yeah. the paradigm, and that's what this does. It can shift them at the subconscious level. So, wow. Okay, and what else have you done in here? Let's see. Um, you're becoming. A, let's see. Ba 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 ba. Well, right now I've signed up for a Reiki course. Are you <laughs> Reiki? Told me that Reiki, yeah. And uh, a life coach. I thought, well, why not? You know. I think it's great, but all of this, I find. You know, this is one of the first things you wrote to me, and you said that you really believe that. Uh, uh, I firm. I also firmly believe forgiveness is the true basis for all healing. Yes, and, and I, I thought your theory on that was very good because I just heard it at church last <laughs> week, and I thought that's interesting. So, would you like to share okay, a few comments uh, about that? Yes. Um, when I wrote my book, and it took twenty years to write, and there, uh, my book is not focused on the the sexual abuse. They're just a short synopsis of the sexual abuse but the ma major part of it and it's five 480 pages are the healing ways that s different steps so if one doesn't appeal to you you can take another one you know there are all kinds of things in there and it doesn't matter what you need to be healed from these will work with anything and I've had people tell me that have read my book that They've never been sexually abused, but the things they learned in there have impacted them so that they will never be the oh, same. That's great. Let's give the name of the book, the, Ill the Illness That Healed Me, The Account of Surviving Sexual Abuse and the Journey into Healing by Janice M. Weinheimer. And Janice, of course, is with me today. And if you would like to chat with us, we have a chat room on pat.utahvalleylive.com. Please ask a question, make a comment. If you're on the radio, uh, you can ask a question and you'll get an answer when we get off the air. It's 801-362-9552, 801-362-9552. We'd like to hear from you. Um, okay, Janice, so you have come through this journey and now you're at a stage where you've healed and are healing or healed enough that you have gone to the extent of all these other, learning these other modalities so that you, you can teach. Right, but I want to get back to forgiveness. That's what well, yeah, I left up, the, and I do too, but I wanted to encompass that because everything that you've talked about, the basis is forgiveness. Yes, and my book is based on love and forgiveness and gratitude. Those are the main things. And, of course, love, it takes love to heal, love from others, love for yourself, love from God. But I had, as I was going through the stages of healing myself, I ran across two doctors on TV. Uh, they happened to be married, but they were both doctors, and they were teaching a two-hour course on healing from sexual abuse. And I went through that, and they had you do these kind of, uh, like in the training, we'd give these positive statements out to the universe, you know. They'd give have me you, one. Tell me one that would be. I, Janice Weinheimer, choose to do this stretch, you okay, know. Okay, okay. And <laughs> yeah. so you put it out there. Yeah, in big, you know, firm voice and everything. So That would be hard for you in the beginning. Yes. That would have been but very I could, hard for you. The trainer used, you know, he used to tell me, go into a closed room or in your car while you're driving so nobody can, <laughs> so nobody can hear you and shout it out to you. Yes, but he said, you've got to do that because that's your power and owning your voice and putting that boom out to the universe so the universe can bring that back. So you're sending that energy out and then that energy travels back to you. That's great. But anyway, these two... And I believe that, by the way. I've been shouting my whole life. <laughs> Good for you. Now, I started owning my voice, I think, at three, maybe five. <laughs> but it is true. It is true that if you keep all of this bottled up, nothing works the way that it should. Absolutely nothing. No. You're out of balance constantly. Well, those trapped emotions are right. creating that. So anyway, I went through that two hours, and they said 
the two doctors said that you did not have to forgive. That was not part of the healing process. And everything within me shouted no. And I, I just knew that was not right. And the more I studied, I could see why. Because you have those cords of energy that are attached to that person, the perpetrator or perpetrators. You have cords of energy that are holding you to the past and you've got to sever those in order to oh, live that in, makes the, sense. in sure, the now sure. and move on in your life you can't be and this is where i should bring up carolyn meese this is a perfect place for her when i first got introduced to energy through her she said everyone has and she put used this example let's say everyone has a hundred dollars worth of energy to live every day it takes $85 for you to go through a day and do what you have to do in a day. So if you spend more than $15 in the past or in the future, you are going to go into energetic debt. And when you do that, you are going to borrow from your friends and family. Then you're going to borrow from your creativity. And then you're going to borrow from yourself. And Co that's... Covey named that emotional bankruptcy. Yeah. When you haven't got enough, you don't have enough in your account, and no one has added to your account, and you're not able to add to another, and it's bankruptcy. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that, but I've heard that so many times, it's true. And this is with emotions, but she's talking about energy. Okay, and that's right, it's not the same. I keep doing that, equating the two, and they're and not. And so when you start borrowing from yourself, this is when you get cancer, this is when you get diabetes, heart attacks. You know, because you have borrowed until there's nothing there's left. There's nothing left. And so she said, you have got to cut those <clears throat> energy strands to the, the cords to the past so you're not going in energetic debt, so that you're not going to lose your creativity. You're not going to harm yourselves. And she's a medical intuitive. Let, let me spell Caroline's name. It's C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E, and the last name, my, Mace, Mace. Mace, M Y. S S M Y S S. If you'd like to look her up, Dr. Caroline Meese. She worked uh, as a medical intuitive with Dr. Norm Sheely, who is one of my all-time favorite doctors. He graduated from medical school when he was 20. My He's goodness. a real scientific left brain, but he has learned the alternative methods, and he has a clinic back in um, Min not Minnesota, somewhere back there. And he uses, he went to China to learn uh, the acupuncture. He uses that. He has a, a copper wall with water flowing down it. Put, he puts people in front of to meditate. He has all these things that are alternative. And he, when Carolyn was working with him, he said that she was actually more accurate in diagnosing as a medical intuitive than he was. As a medical Person. As a surgeon. Oh, my goodness. And all she wanted to know, she never saw the person. She just wanted to know their name and their birth date. And she could do it. And she saw it with that much. And, and Chuni Lin does this too. He just, he give him a name and he can see their energy. But you can train yourself to do that. That's what Chuni says. His book is called A Healer in Every Family. A Healer in Every Family. A healer within, and then the subtitle, I okay. think, is a healer, a healer within. Anyone can become a healer, and that's what he totally believes. So if people listening, watching, who know you, who've heard about you, if they're interested in your seminar, would it be along? I mean, we just covered in a half hour a whole lot of things, a whole lot of modalities, different topics, uh, um, and well, we I want to know it all really quickly. I, like I told you, I would pro what I've thought of is starting out with Qigong because they can get a taste, okay. a feeling of energy quickly with that. If a person went through a course, would it be a six-week course, a six-month course? I'd like week? to give them in a three-hour workshop enough that they have a glimpse of what they can do and then move from there. I don't okay, know. Okay, so do an overview to start yeah, with. Yeah. I think that would be great. That would be great. Wow. Okay. Um, did we get through all of that, uh, the, gra the um, forgiveness? 
Oh, <laughs> no, we didn't get through all that. I got sidetracked. <laughs> with, Imagine that. <laughs> with Carol and me and, and the forgiveness. But the forgive. well, I think we did. We talked about why you had to do it because you've got to cut, you know, those energetic cords. And that's how I got off onto Carolyn. But also, you've got to forgive yourself. There you go. And that is the most important thing. And whatever it is it doesn't yeah it doesn't matter because we all hold things against ourselves from whatever happened when we were young growing up we like we say we have this excess emotional baggage so we all have things that we need to forgive ourselves for and just move on i have a little theory you can tell me if i'm right uh, utah has a terrible problem with uh, adult using uh, medical drugs uh, prescription drugs <clears throat> and uh, my theory is that uh, people will not forgive themselves they want to be perfect they make mistakes um, maybe they say something they wish they hadn't said and they can't let it go or maybe someone's hurt them and they can't let it go recently a neighbor died a wonderful lady passed away but she'd gotten her feelings hurt early on in the neighborhood and never came to church, never visited anybody in the entire neighborhood. She was 94 years old. She lived alone, never married, never had children. Oh, wow. Her sisters died. Can you imagine the loneliness? All because the forgiveness just didn't happen. And I thought, what do we do with ourselves? And that's where it came up in church, was that really we're required to forgive those that hurt us and harm us, that you know misunderstand us. And then turn around and forgive yourself, for goodness sakes, because half of it doesn't do the job. When you break the word down, forgive, it's for and give. It's a gift that you're giving before. <laughs> it, it needs to, you've just got to. I mean, the forgiveness, if you're carrying that around, I can't even imagine the emotional baggage that's tied up within someone who cannot forgive and all that because non-forgiving is a lower energy you're carrying uh, rejection and uh, what's the word sometimes pride and the uh, r word i want uh, not rejection but you won't let go of it you know you're holding that on and it's all lower energy entertaining all of the uh, bad stuff and so it's affecting you because you're getting those trapped emotions all over you. It's affecting probably every part of your body. The life force can't run smoothly. And this is what Chudi Lin talks about all the time, is having everything in balance. And he has a lot of exercises that he has you do just so you can get in balance. A simple one is just like hold a volleyball in your hands. Oh, it's a, an imaginary volleyball and just turn it over. Oh, that's interesting. And it's a ball of energy. And you can feel that. I mean, my fingers kind of tingle because I've done it so much. But you actually can feel that or bring your hands out from the side and bring them together till you feel that ball of energy. And, and I, isn't it true that people really, they don't become who they should be because they're full of this um, anger? Yes. Instead of forgiving yourself for whatever you did or they, whatever the person did, let it go. And can we give a email that someone can reach you and, yes. and talk directly with you? It's Puggy, P-U-G-G-I-E, 37 at yahoo.com. P-U-G-G-I-E, 37 at yahoo.com. And um, boy, I think it would be great to uh, be able to have folks call you and talk to you. And also, we'll, when you get ready to kick off your seminars, you let us know so that we can talk about that, get some ads running. And, and it would be nice if people would email me and that say, yes, good. you know, I would like to, to be have one of a seminar. Yeah, so you know whether to do a, have one here or one up towards Salt Lake area. And so. we talked about not charging in the beginning and just getting a feel for getting it. Getting a group see together. If, yeah, see if people really want this to see. And uh, I and we talked about it before. If In a three-hour session, if I had 10, 20 people, I could do at least one emotional, re trapped emotion release on each one oh, that would in be that so time, good. just so they could experience and it. And no, no charge. This will be free. Can I say it'll be before Christmas or after Christmas? That will have to, I'll have to decide on that. I have okay. a lot of projects. 
Well, you're, I'm in, you're involved, involved in, in a lot of things. <laughs> so we will watch for that because I, I'm sure there are a number of people that really have struggled with it. I have known some. I have gone through it years ago, um, realizing that non-forgiving was hurting me, not the other person. They'd gone on with their life. And can you imagine what it's doing to your cells and your body? Well, I couldn't then, but I can now. So <laughs> I look back and find it absolutely amazing. Many of us made it through some of the years we went through because we were we wanted to be perfect. We wanted to do things right. We wanted to be everything to everybody, and that's not possible. And yeah. so there's a feeling of failure until you get past that. And I don't know why this comes up, but it's coming up, so I'm going to share. Uh, I watched the first part of the Holocaust this week. Um, and Anna, the young girl in the Weiss family, played piano with her mother. She was really good. She was just, you know, very happy, you know, just vibrant in everything that she did. And then one night she came home and two men raped her. Uh. And she, you never see that energy again, not the vibrant, not the piano, nothing. She Is just, this a story we know of Anna, the story uh, that's been told over and over? Uh, I think years? no. This is new. Uh, well, it's the one in the Holocaust movie. Okay. Uh, you're not thinking of Anne Frank, are you? I am. Okay. I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I but am. she ends up uh, almost in a mental institution, and they gas her. Oh my dear. You know, and she goes from this beautiful, vibrant, you know, energetic person to a, a nothingness. Shell. No, just it, it just ate away everything, and I thought there's not a better example of what, you know, sexual abuse can do to a person than that story of Anna Weiss wow. in there. Um, I'm not going to ask how it affected you, but I can be sure that it did. It did. Um, last week, we got down to talking about discipline and how what we're doing when we punish ourselves and punish others. And you start a story about your daughter. And I thought we would like to maybe start that again and, fin and give you time to finish it this time. If you've just joined us, I'm talking with Janice Weinheimer. Uh, she has written a book, The Illness That Healed Me, An Account of Surviving Sexual Abuse and the Journey into Healing. Uh, this is her fourth visit with me, and we haven't even scratched the surface yet of what she's capable of doing and what she's been through. So let's take discipline and talk that for about that for a few moments. Well, what I began <clears throat> to tell was when I graduated from college, I had this, you know, feeling that I never wanted to really hurt any of my children. I just wanted to show them love, but I was not good with little children. I didn't know how. I didn't understand them. I'm great with teenagers, have been, and that's where my focus has been, but I did not know how to do it with little children. And I listened to siblings and advice from others and used their advice, and I regret that because it was too harsh. In fact, I've apologized to each of my children for that because it was horrible, the discipline. It wasn't discipline, it was punishing, and that was what I was never going to do. But I have a daughter who taught me so much about disciplining. And I think we quoted George Bernard Shaw that says, you don't mend a person by damaging him. To punish is to damage. And so I watched her and I, I started to tell how my granddaughter was about four years old and my daughter was leaving with her children and this granddaughter ran around our house and I went one side and my daughter went the other side and when I caught up to my granddaughter I said, you're in big trouble. And my daughter very firmly looked me straight in the eyes and she said, don't you ever say that to a child of mine again. Mm. And uh, it took me back, you know, a little, but I watched her. And her whole thing was, she didn't have, I mean, I had charts, I had my kids, you know, doing things around the house, everything, not when the triplets were born, because I didn't have time then, but later on when they got older, we used some charts and things. And uh, You might mention you have nine children. Yes, I have nine children. <laughs> Seven that were born in four years. <laughs> You had, what, twins and then triplets and then twins again? No, two sets of twins and then the triplets. 
So that is doing it the hard way. <laughs> well, I have a sister-in-law said that it was the easy way. <laughs> really? You got them all raised at once. Is but that she it? had never been through a <laughs> multiple birth. <laughs> yeah, she, she had uh, three children, you know, a year apart, and I agree that's difficult too. But uh, it, unless you've been there, you don't really relate. <laughs> It was easy when I spoke to the mothers of twin clubs, you know, both local and state and national, because they all understood, Yeah, <laughs> you know. But anyway, my daughter didn't have all these rules and things like I had, but she kind of just let things go, you know, they just do things together. And when she would see a child acting out, she took that child and held them on her lap on the couch for a long time and and gave them love whether it was a small child rocking them caressing them nurturing them or whether it was a 14 year old son who had been acting out and she didn't say a word to him she just took him on the couch and held him for two hours wow. without a word mm. and just loved him and afterwards he apologized to her and she never said a thing to him mm. And I look at those children, and they are the ones who are always there for anyone who's being picked on, for the underdog. They stick up for them. They have no fears. You know, they just have lived with love so much that they just are love. Beautiful. And so I saw it in action. I know it can be done and, what, and the way to do it. And I regret that I didn't know that with my little children. Yeah, but we've been, we can learn. And that's the exciting part of all of this is that um, <clears throat> we may have raised our children like we were raised. Oh, yes, because those programs are running and inside in your head, us. And that's all we know. <laughs> and now we are learning different ways. And that, what a beautiful story of just holding on to a child. Instinctively, I have done that. We've all done that instinctively. But the damage is done by the time you're through hollering and yelling at a child or really threatening them to scare them to pieces. <laughs> and so, well, when a child uh, gets a scrape or a hurt, it's natural you pick them up on your lap and you hold do. them and love them. You do, but it's Kiss no it different. Better. Yeah, with an emotional outburst, you know, or emotional thing, you do the same thing. Emotional injuries, you pick them up and you love them because that's what they need. If they are acting out, they don't need scolding. They don't need, you know, uh, harshness, you know, to be spanked or anything else. What they need is love to bring them back to who they really are. Beautiful. And I know I spoke at Apollo <laughs> High when, because uh, I had eight teenagers at once and they thought I knew everything, which I didn't. But anyway, I spoke to their child growth and development class and I said something about I had never grounded a child. I had hands go up like crazy. Would you volunteer to be our mother? <laughs> because I always, I'm sure. <laughs> I always felt that the consequence should follow the action you know whatever happened that they got the consequences like my son stayed out too late he knew he had to go to church on Sunday morning and he sometimes he'd come home and been out playing basketball with his friends and stuff he'd come home get ready and go to church and never go to bed <laughs> and I used to say to him don't call me up at two o'clock in the morning and tell me you're gonna go play basketball because I'll never go back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> and so we left the hall light on, and the last person in would just turn the, light, off. Uh, the light off. But I trusted them, you know, and I think that's a big thing. If you don't trust them, then you've got that kind of energy going out to them, and they prove not to be trustworthy because you don't. That's what you're saying. I, I think my sons have learned from some of my um, examples that were not so good. And uh, raising kids alone, I was distrustful. Not so much of them, but other people, what might happen to them, where are they, and so forth. And now I watch them have greater patience with their children, greater understanding, and not so quick to judge. And that's, that's a good thing. We all learn, don't oh, we? Oh, <laughs> it's a terrible path, but, terrible, but it's a journey that we're in. Um, can I ask you about, <clears throat> the, we talked about the emotion code therapy. But I'd like to hear about Wayne Perry. Um, he looks interesting in your, okay, in your I, notes. 
Wayne Perry I <laughs> ran into while I was tending grandchildren in L.A. I put the children to bed and I turned on the TV, went up in the bedroom and turned on the TV and there was five minutes left and it was called Heart Touch. And I was so impressed with that five minutes, there was a phone number to call and this was on a channel that had to do with alternative type okay. healing. Uh, and health, you know, kind of thing. So I called the number and left a message, and I never heard back from him. So when I got back home, I called and left another message, and he called me back. And he talked to me for over an hour. Wow. And he Goodness taught me that. about uh, healing with sound. And at that time, he had what he called a vocal choir, and he sent me a cassette tape of it. That tells you how long ago it was. But you would think these this was instruments that, that were on this choir, you know, but it was just voices that he had taught to tone and to chant, and it sounded like a, an orchestra. And so Wayne taught me uh, a lot about sound and how you can heal, like the chakra healings. Uh, you can go through a chanting, and he uses the vowel sounds, pure vowel sounds like I... Ah, uh, e, o, u, uh, you know, and those are the sounds, and you can use them very guttural all the way up to as high as you can go, and you can chant those in a breath. Ah, uh, i, e, ah, uh, o, u, ah, uh, i, e, ah, uh, o, u, ah, uh, you know, and go on up and down the scale, and these will help heal your chakra balancing. You Interesting. Know. You can do that in the shower. I mean, I'm not doing it the full <laughs> vocal thing right now, but and then you can go on and add the soft consonants to them, like shy she sha sho shu <laughs> sha, <laughs> you know, and and do that. But anyway, he spent a long time teaching me about bioacoustics, and he 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 was a musician, had played guitar for years, and then he learned about the how they put the sounds together and everything. And I actually, about three years ago, met up with Wayne in L.A., and he did a, a sound, uh, what's the word I want, uh, testing on me, and found out I was deficient. I think it was in the sounds of, of B and D. And, and what, what, would, what does that mean? That I'm not balanced. It, there's a sound, a, a note, for each of the chakras. Okay. And he found out that, and I have that. Sound You're deficient? In the B's and the D's, and he has uh, CDs, and I bought his CDs, and he says, now, I don't want you to listen to the others. He says, you just listen to these two. He says, put them in your car, and whenever you're driving, listen to these, and it will, you know, boost that in your chakras and balance them. So that's interesting. What. And it, uh, my daughter and my grandson sat there and listened to him as he was evaluating me and everything. And they just thought it was amazing, you know, what he could do. Did you think he was right? I mean, you felt comfortable with what he was saying? I had read his book. He has a book called Sound Medicine by Wayne Perry. Sound Medicine by Wayne Perry. Sound, S-O-U-N-D, mm -hmm. right? Sound Medicine by Wayne Perry. And that has all of what you're talking about yes, and a lot more. Yes, it has more. all, yes, everything <clears throat> in there about how to do that and uh, where you can get his tapes if you're interested in them, just listening to those. Well, I do know, um, and this is really simple, but over the years, and I, last night I had a little trouble getting to sleep, and finally I turned on music on my computer, or on my uh, television, and I had to go through two or three channels to get where I wanted to go, but I wanted to like classical because it's very soothing. And there's some jazz where there are a lot of horns that are easy, easy listening. I think of Dave Brubeck years ago and how easy, <laughs> what easy listening that was, and there are people who don't have a clue who I'm talking about. But I do. <laughs> 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 but uh, there, and I seek that kind of music. Um, I can handle a lot of opera, but if it gets too, too okay. wild and too heavy, it's not soothing to me. I love good symphony, but I think we do. We're, we're we cleave to certain sounds that are soothing to us for the most part. I can't answer why the kids are caught up in the kind of music they listen to. Uh, it's difficult music to, I don't even like to have it in the background addiction. anywhere. It, it's an addiction. Well, is it? Is that what it Michael is? Michael Ballon 
taught years ago uh, when I was taking a class from him at BYU Education Week, and he taught about that. And he and Rosalie Pratt also teaches at BYU, and and I have all this in the book. And uh, while all this is in your the illness that healed me. Book? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, he taught that the sounds. You know, in uh, like you're saying, classical sounds, Mozart, the right, Mozart effect. Right. And there's a book by I think it's Don Campbell who wrote that uh, that I found later. But anyway, those sounds from that classical music, especially Mozart, actually is soothing and in uh, conjunction with your heartbeat. But the heavy metal music is in opposition to your heartbeat and your body actually has to make an adjustment to listen to it and it makes you in an angry state brings you to the lower energy so that kind of music is in I feel the lower toxic frequencies if i've been in that environment very long it's like it's a anger very toxic yes. feeling yeah and he said that even the if you had cd's in your house with the covers of these uh, musicians on there it would bring that kind of energy and even if you're not playing it, hmm. just having it there. And Dr. Nelson talked about he was working on a patient and he couldn't adjust him. He couldn't do anything. And all of a sudden he saw on his the, the patient's T-shirt, skull and crossbones hmm. and all these things. And he said, I went and got a towel and covered that up and then I could work on him. My but goodness. he could not work on him wow. with that showing. So we do not realize what energy Yes, I mean, I was driving down the street, came to a stoplight, and a car came up beside me, alongside me, and that blasting heavy metal music, and instantly I was angry, you know, just instantly, and it was unbelievable to me. But after studying that, you know, I understand. So, that. do these kids become addicted to this kind yes, of sound? Yes, it is addicting, very addicting, and they can't. That's why they can't get away from it. So what does it do in them? It creates some kind of um, euphoria in reverse it's or something the, that they, they are hooked on it then. It, it's the, <clears throat> it is addicting, which is uh, the desire of 125, I think it is, that creates all of this within them. And once they get going with it, yes, they, it's, it's like a drug. They can't leave it alone. But it's the force of that lower energy and there is force in that lower energy even though it's so low even but it it is a force i mean look at what hitler did well would you say satanic i don't would i, would I go that far i don't like to use that okay <laughs> but it is a lower frequency lower vibrational and they get addicted to that you know just well you know like the people did with hitler he he only calibrates at 50 but look at what he did with the people and how they just tuned into him because he he drew them in with his shouting you know and, and drew them in and, and it's a force addictive. it's heard. a force but it's not power ah uh, who's got the book force versus that's power. david hawkins okay dr david hawkins um, force versus power and the force is under 200, and power is above 200. But the power overpowers the force, if you can say it that way, because Churchill, one man vibrating at 450, had more power than all of Germany under Hitler at 50. How do you know all these things? You spend your life reading. <laughs> I read a lot. I've st well, I've had Dr. I should Hawkins. have done 20 years of reading instead of 20 years on radio. <laughs> well, we each have our thing, and I don't know why my path led me there, but I've led from one thing to another, and, I, and I'm intrigued. I just have this thirst for knowledge. For knowledge. For, for, well, but it has a, to speak to my heart. It, it's, uh, I find this all just totally amazing. We've got a few minutes left, and I want to talk about... Um, the Hawaiian energetic healing modality, because that's, first of all, I can't possibly pronounce that name. It's got too many N's, too many O's, and too many P's Ho in it. Ho'oponopono. See, what did I say? <laughs> Do it again. Ho'oponopono. 
Uh huh. Okay, I got the last part. Pono, I, I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Hawaiian technique, and Dr. Hugh Lin, um, I learned about him, and he was asked to do therapy on. It's a mental institution in Hawaii, and they have uh, they had 200 people who were rapists and murderers in this institution. And nobody would stay there longer than a week or a month because, can you imagine? You mean the, the staff? Yeah, the yeah. energy. And he's, uh, oh. people would, you know, inch themselves along the hallway because, I mean, these people were shackled. Oh. You know, the energy was just so terrible in there. And so they asked him if he would come and do this. And he really, you know, he hesitated, but they kind of persuaded him. And so he... I said, okay, but I have to do it my way. And so he went in there. He never saw these patients. He looked at their charts. But Ho'oponopono is a way of working with divinity. And what it is, is you say to yourself, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And you're talking to divinity because he said, whenever anyone or anything shows up in your life, you had a responsibility of bringing it there. It was not necessarily your fault, but that some, in some way you called that forth into your space. And so you have to do the healing for ah, creating that. No one can do that for you. You have to do it. And, the, okay. and so you say over and over again in your mind, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And you're talking to divinity. I'm so sorry I brought this forth in my life. Please forgive me for doing whatever it was I did that caused this to come forth in my life. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to go through and get forgiveness. And I love you for being who you are and bringing you know, healing to me. And he did this, and in six months, several of these patients were released, and none had been released before. Never saw them, looked at their charts, and just went over this. By the end of two years, almost... Wait, did he have them do this? Did, did, did somebody, no. He just did it over he just each did chart. It. He did it himself. <clears throat> so he did it for them, and I just had said... He you did it for himself. He did it for himself. Because in some way, he was responsible for bringing these people into his life. And so whatever part he took in this... He wanted to heal that responsibility. Oh, interesting. My and goodness. that's what he did. And within two years, almost every one of those inmates was released. So were, would you say they were rehabilitated? or? Yes, this is the power of divinity and love. And when my daughter, I told you, went through panic attacks earlier uh, this year because of uh, her kidnapping, and I, this is one of the things I taught her uh, to do. And she said sometimes she would just lie there, you know, over and over in her mind because the panic was so bad. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And it doesn't matter what order you say it is, you know. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I love you, you know. And you just say it over and over. There's such power in that with the intent that is with it. And I said to her, you're talking to divinity. You know, whatever that is for you, if that's God, if it's the universe, if it's your higher self, whatever it is, you're talking to divinity and asking, you know, for this healing to take place. Oh, my goodness. Um, Janice, you, you never cease to amaze me with the information you're bringing forth, and I have no idea what we're going to do next week, but we're going to. And we'll be back, and tomorrow I have uh, Joy Bischoff with me. Uh, she's uh, got a whole topic, Understanding Nibley, and that's e e equally challenging in a different oh, way. Oh, boy, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and all of his thoughts. I want to thank Kent Vorkink, who owns uh, Utah Valley Live and uh, helps us around here with what we're doing. I want to thank uh, the folks at KHQN, uh, 1480 on the AM dial. Uh, we appreciate being on the air and having you listen to us. And, of course, you can find me on your internet, pat.utahvalleylive.com. But most of all, I want to thank you for being with me today, Janice Weinheimer. And your book is available in stores and online. Is that correct? At, at Amazon.com Amazon. or BarnesandNoble.com. Okay. 
You can find them there. I'm Pat Sheranian. It was a pleasure to be here. I'm grateful to Kayani. It has changed my life every bit of it. I'm grateful for that. Grateful for you. Have a great day. Be safe.